We are still preparing for Parashat Pikadei and um, I'm towards the end of the study so there's a, a lot of information, a lot of interesting things. Really looking forward into presenting it. Um, just to give an overview and a recap of the Torah portion. So, as usual, I um, miscount a bit and I'm out of sync, but probably with good reason. We are supposed to do Leviticus Vahigra, Vikra, uh, this week. Um, and since I started the Torah portions, um, the, the previous Torah portion and Pikudei, I can't remember the previous name, but Yehi, I think it's his name, no, Vayakel, Vayakel and Pikudei is, um, is a combined Torah portion. And I've never seen Pikudei on its own. So the last, I think it's four chapters of Exodus is never really discussed. And it's not a lot of information to work with. But applying the patterns and the connections and things really highlighted a lot of things that made, made it a extremely fascinating Torah portion. Now to start off with, Pikudei comes from the word Pakat, that means, or that's root word Pakat, that means to care for and to look after. In the same way as a mother look after a firstborn, that word is found where Yahweh um, did according to his word and Sarah conceived and Abraham and the first son to Abraham uh, was born, uh, Isaac the son of promise and in the light of that it gives us the idea that the tabernacle is the baby of Yahweh the newborn baby and reflecting on that in relation to the body of Messiah we are his newborn babies as a collective a newborn baby and we need to grow up into becoming a Sarah now Sarah means princess it relates to the queen and the symbolism of a name Shin is the crown Resh is the head and Hay is the torso so it gives you a picture of a woman with a crown a crowned woman and that's where we basically summarize the whole book of Exodus in this Torah portion from starting as a baby up to growing into a mature woman not only a mature woman but someone who has been elevated to the highest state which is the queen that will be married to the king through the marriage covenant so this Torah portion we're gonna look at the marriage covenant because that is the intent of the covenant the overlaying meaning of what the covenant is actually about um, the covenant based on the layer relating to Moses was basically to govern the people um, and then you get the basic covenant relating to Adam which is the restoration process so those three layers of the meaning of the covenant we're going to conclude because what we're also going to do is look at words and I've mentioned before we're going to look at the word make or made um, behold and blessed because those three words are used in both narratives uh, the creation narrative as well as the, the creation of the sanctuary and we're going to connect things just like we did with the pattern of instructions and construction and linking things together and the menorah pattern all those things we're going to apply similar techniques in connecting the sanctuary to the creation narrative and there's a lot of fascinating insights that come to the fore that basically connects the intent of the covenant of restoration up to the point of the queen appointment of the queen which is the final state of the restoration of man and um, it's all summed up in this Torah portion now this Torah portion ends with the event where Yahweh's glory filled the tabernacle 
and that is also relating to the final final wedding feast and where um, the queen married marries uh, the king uh, through the covenant uh, and uh, work of messiah now as you know when we marry yahweh we marry him through mashiach who's the mediator now we see the same symbolism or pattern in the concept of the firmament that's a barrier that brings separation but it's also bringing unification so the same thing that separates also unifies and as i said before when we did the book of genesis the creation pattern is to speak something from the mind of yahweh so it doesn't come from nothing it comes from the intelligence of the almighty creator and through the power construct constructive power of his words and then every word that he formed formed something um, physical as well so that is the first step the next step is to separate he separated the waters above from the waters below he separated the waters below from the earth or the dry ground and then he also separated adam into adam and chava um, the final stages of creation is the restoration process which is the reunification of adam and uh, chava which will become adam again that is the body of messiah collective like body of messiah which will be the bride which will then be unified back to yahweh then we also see the unification of heaven and earth the new heavens new earth where the heaven comes down to earth which is where the earth or dry ground will separate from the waters shamaim this shamaim will come down to eretz and they will meet again so the unification of the heaven and earth will happen and in that whole process we will all be reuniting back to the heart of the father the reason i'm using the word heart is we're going to move into vayikra which is leviticus which is the center of the torah the heart of the torah we're going to look at a few interesting things uh, once we step into leviticus uh, that's to do with heart we're going to also look at um, the word to separate or to um, divide which is the word dabal uh, which has the symbolism of the house in the middle that's the intent of dividing is to reunite the dalet on the right is the doorway and the doorway give access to bal which is betlamet which is heart so we're going to move into the heart of yahweh's torah next time which is vayikra or leviticus so looking forward and sharing this uh, parasha i hope you have a lovely day and i'll speak to you soon shalom